Word. Yay, we're recording. Mm -hmm. All right, so, oh, and look, Vali gets to show her face. All right, so happy August, everyone. We are chugging along this year, man. I can't believe it. It's August 4th, 2021. It's crazy. Um, but I'm happy to see some familiar faces on this call, and I'm so excited Chris is here, and look at that, he just popped all of his information into the chat box, so if you need to get in touch with him directly, there's his phone number and email. Um, so I think everyone on the call probably knows you, Chris, but... Um, you can still introduce me. <laughs> I can introduce you anyway, right? Yeah. Um, I know that you go by Chris Pod, but any everyone that I talk to, I just say Crazy Chris, and they all know who I'm talking about. So just so you know, that's what I call you when you're not around, <laughs> Crazy Chris. But I say it to your face. Um, <laughs> Love it. And or or obviously Chris with the twins. That's the other you know most yep. common description. Um, but I was so excited when I saw you at the um, meetup event where Pace Morby spoke of just a few weeks ago, a month and a half ago or some, right. something like that. Um, and I know that you are working with him. You are part of his mentorship program. Um, and I know that he just has some really cool things that he works on very specifically that are maybe different than stuff that we've already learned through our other, you know, form of real estate education. Um, right. So, I really was hoping that I could just get you on here tonight and talk about some of the creative financing stuff that you've been learning, some subject to um, maybe when to apply it, maybe give us some examples. So without further ado, Crazy Chris up uh, upstate, where, where are you? You're Pres Prescott? Pace? Yeah, Prescott. 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 So Prescott, Arizona, he is live on Zoom and hopefully we are gonna start meeting live again, guys, and he will actually make some more trips down here. Right. Um, so with that being said, Chris, you can add to that introduction if you need to, um, and then just jump in. If you wanna share your screen, you can. If you want us to just jump in and ask you questions, whatever format you want tonight, I leave it up to you. Okay, well, there's not too many people on here, so it won't really matter. Um, you know, so let me, I go ahead and oh, wait, to, let me make sure I turned on share, share, screen sharing. Oh, yes, I actually told me I can. Okay. <laughs> you can now, you can now. Okay, so first off, this is a big, is a big book here for you. You can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. Okay, very good information there. Um, that's a big one on how to talk to people, how to, you know, basically just how to talk to them, you know, how you want to be able to present to them and stuff like that, what you want to say, how it affects, um, you know, the, the conflicts and stuff like that. Um, it's a very, very good book. It's a great book. Um, I'm like second time audio listening to it through. So <laughs> that's what I do. I can't read. I can't read. I'm not a reader. So yeah, so there, this year, you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar by David Sandler. Um, you'll hear about it, the Sandler method. I'm sure you probably heard about it. One being the Sandler method, the Sandler submarine, um, stuff of that aspect. Um, it's really good just because it, it gives you a, a different insight of, on how you look at these uh, situations when they come and talk to you. So um, so with that, so now I'm interested. I've never heard of that book. I'm definitely writing that title down. Yeah, it's, it's a very good book. Um, like I said, it's on there. It's on uh, Apple Books for like 15 bucks and it's audio and stuff like that. Very, very great. So basically what I've been doing with, with uh, Payson and his mentorship is it's creative deal structuring. You know, um, it is not, I repeat, it is not just subject twos or seller financing. By the time we get done here, you will realize why it's not <laughs> and that you would never call that, call it that again, because, of, you know, just because of, of everything that you're going to, you know, some of the things that you're going to learn out of here and just be like, wait, what, how is that? What, what, you know, so um, first off, I like to, you know, it is seller, you know, creative financing. That's, you know, his thing. 
but I like the spin that I put on there is creative deal structuring. The, re the reason why is because it is, it all depends on how you acquire the property, how you're going to disposition the property, to how you're going to dis disposition the property, is to how you're going to acquire the property, and how you structure everything in between, okay? Such as money, the payments, the interest, the type of loans, everything in the middle. So depending, you know, it may be a perfect uh, fix and flip, but it's not that kind of opportunity. It may be an opportunity that you would keep as a buy and hold or just wholesale off to some, to somebody. So it, it's, it's a very wide range. And that's why, you know, whenever I was telling people, yeah, I'm in, you know, Pace Morby subject to creative, you know, creative finance group. They're like, oh, you're just doing seller finance and subject twos. No, it's far above and beyond that. Um, so with that so being, just so you know, I don't want you to give away, you know, any of his secrets if no, no, yeah, I know. you know, top of the whatever, but, um, I know at the end, you know, I would like you to maybe share something about what, if you can, what you, you know, pay to get into that and what the specifics of that actual program are. Um, but yeah, I love what you're saying, how it's not just subject to, um, and would love to hear, you know, just a little bit of an overview of some of these deal structuring, because especially with the question we just got from Janet, you know, that's, I feel right. like a perfect situation where you have to think creatively and outside of the box. And that's what I know that he gets you guys to do. Exactly. So, so with it, there, there's, um, you know, really quick, it, it's, um, it's 8,000, for the course, you, there's another tier. I think it's like ten. I think, um, which is in turn you get like his build out on certain tools. Um, but I didn't need that. I don't need that that up that other section there. But the biggest thing is, and you've heard of Maria though too, is you don't have to pay for his mentorship. Just work with his students, you know, and that's you know that's that's one of the big things. That's one of the big things that I do love about him is, is because. He doesn't push his course. He's not pushing a course. He's, he's just like, hey, yeah, well, you know, I just kind of did this on the side. You know, people were asking and asking. And so I kind of did it. Um, and so, so that's like how that's been. And since then, he's, you know, he doesn't push it. You know, Maria was there when he said, yeah, don't worry about joining my course. Just, you know, everybody that's not, you know, sub two student at that meeting. What did he say? Just reach out to anybody in here, you know. We partner up. We, that, that's what it is. I love the community because it's a it's a uh, knuckle down, get shit done. You know, it's like, hey, yeah, close, you know, I got a, I got another deal here. Like, we don't have that in there. It's just like, yeah, you know, another one bites the dust. You know, or like, hey, uh, my goal this month is five. Closed out last month at six. Whatever. Nobody's, you know, it's it's nothing. No showboating or anything like that. It's more or less like, hey, yeah, close another one. Let's go on to the next. You know, nobody's doing any sort of celebrating and stuff in there, which is, which is really cool. But everybody's more than happy to actually reach out. You are definitely encouraged to reach out to other sub two students to work out with other people. If you guys are not a part of uh, Pace Morby's uh, creative financing group, the free group on Facebook, it's called uh, Pace Creative Financing with Pace Morby. If you're not a part of that one, check that out. What that is, is he encourages us whenever he's on, you know, a uh, wholesale hotline and stuff to put our information in there. So then that way other people can work, uh, can reach out to us. It, it, it's, so, it's so awesome. I mean, I have so many people to reach out to coast to coast. I can, and by doing this too, I'm helping other people structure their deals. And I'm also making money on the side out of it too. So because of that, you know, I can help, you know, structure, you know, a deal for Marie and, you know, guess what? You know, she can't do anything with it. She reaches out to me. Okay, great. We can become partners on that. You know, she, she has a buyer for it. I'll structure the deal. Guess what? We're partners. If I don't join, if I don't help her out, guess what? She loses the deal. Okay. That's money out of her pocket. You know, but if I help her out, it puts money in my pocket. We don't need to be greedy. There's, there's so much going around. And that's what a lot of people, you know, really don't understand is working with others actually helps you gain a lot more momentum and a lot more traction a lot faster. Um, so I do encourage you guys to reach out, 
you know, I am a source here. If you guys have any sort of questions, um, you know, absolutely. Um, but aside from that, deal structuring itself is one, talking with the seller, finding out what they really, really want and what they need, how you can actually help them out. The other side of it is the way that you're going to structure your deals. I just took, I got this deal in uh, that I'm closing on the end of this month. Um, ARV is 50K. Okay, ARV. Um, I'm paying 60K. You know, I didn't have to haggle on the price. I'm paying 60K uh, price. I didn't, you know, hey, well, how about this? How about that? No, I did nothing of the sorts. They said, well, I want to, you know, uh, 60, 65 there. I said, okay, great. What if I can, you know, give you 70? Oh, great. That'd be cool. We uh, wound up coming down in price because of, of a few things that I got to do to, the, to it and stuff. Um, they're paying uh, taxes and some minor repairs and stuff for it right now. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, how about I give you that at closing? So at closing that there was $5,000. So in turn, I'm actually paying 65 for it with 5,000 down. But here's the thing. It's paid off free and clear, and I'm uh, purchasing it for 60000 at 2% over 25 years, okay? Well, at that rate, they are making 76 k off of that. So they're making 60000 and all together at the end of it, they're going to be making 76000 right there. That's their, that's their money. They're happy about it because they're making more, more than the 60. Okay, great. Guess what? I'm happy about it because my payment is 250, 250 a month to the seller. Okay. So the seller gets 250 a month, right? 250 a month to the seller. Okay. I can rent that out for 850. Okay. Minus taxes um insurance um vacancy uh vacancy and loss repairs you know all, all that stuff um so everything and, and minus that uh the the seller payment the seller payment okay so minus all that i come out to be just under 300 so we'll just call it 300 but i'm going to make 300 a month on that that's going to be cash in my pocket now, is it going to be vacant all the time? No. Uh, you know, if I get a good tenant in there, guess what? That's extra bonus money that I won't have to deal with, but it will also go towards repairs and stuff like that. So 300 is, a, is an actual good number. Guess what? So they're making 70, uh, 76,000 uh, at 250 a month for 25 years, right? You want to know what I'm going to make on this? 90K at 25 years. Okay. From that 300, just from that 300 right there. So I'm making that rent that uh, right there off that rental. So okay. quick question. Did you say you're giving them a down payment? What was the $5,000 again? The $5,000 was essentially a down payment because they're paying the property taxes and uh, the few minor repairs that, that need to be done. They're paying for that up front, and they just wanted a quick recovery on that. So I said, okay, great. We're still at 65,000. I just told them that I would give them 5,000 down. Okay, so you're purchasing it for 65. Right. You're giving them five. And I'm you're financing it. Financing eight. them with 60. Yep. And then, and you might go into this, but what if they wanted more money? I mean, what if they needed more money? I need. For what? On a down? a down payment? A down payment. Uh, I'm in trouble. I mean, I don't, yeah. It, it depends. That, that's right. That's what we're under contract for right now. This is a deal that we're under contract for. Yeah, I so guess it, it, that would go to their motivation and the fact that if they needed more money up front, they might then have to take the lower like all cash offer because they just need to sell the property. These people probably don't just need cash. So they're willing to take the $5,000 down and finance it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's why it's so important, you know, to really understand their particular situation. Like Rochelle said to Janet before, you got to make sure that you understand what your seller is looking for and what their goals are. Yeah. 
right? So Chris, maybe you can give us just even a little bit more information on like why they were willing to accept this or kind of like the particulars of the negotiation with this. Well, they, this one here, they, they were moving or they had moved and it was just another property that they had and it was too far for them. They didn't want to do away, you know, they, they just wanted to be away with it. Well, they knew that they could still make money on, on it itself and they're not hurting for the money, but they were interested in, in, in uh, selling this property. Um, and it was funny because it just kind of came up in a conversation that, you know, somebody had, had talked to me about this at, um, when I was talking to another, uh, another seller and they were like, oh, hey, well, like, what can you do? What? Hey, you know, I have a property that I might be looking at selling. And I'm like, okay, great, so that like, was going to be my question, how you acquired it. Is it local or is it one of the ones that's far away? It's far away. And I got it off of seller financing. Seller financing, what, dot com? I mean, what do you mean? No, seller financing. I got it through through talking to a seller. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, I got it through talking to a seller and I asked them what they're looking for. Well, I'm looking at, you know, I, I want to get like 65, 70 for it. I'm like, great. What if I can give you that? You know, so the biggest thing is, is that when, it, when I'm uh, asking them and, and talking to them, it's a much easier conversation just to find out what it is that they need and, you know, what they're looking to do. OK, because guess what? Then you start finding out, um, OK, right now I'm I'm in talks with another uh, with, with somebody else that I'm teaming up with. Well, that it might be if, if we can if I can get to talk to the seller, but the seller, this property has been listed since 2019. Okay, they want seven hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. But the partner that I'm talking to, they said, well, they would be willing to sell it for five hundred and thirty nine to the right person. Okay, well, it doesn't really sound like they're really motivated. Well, they say that they are because they are very the seller themselves are very, very sick. I haven't talked to the seller yet. I'm trying to get this partner to, you know, that you know, is reaching out to me to get me on the phone with the seller so I can actually find out. Because, you know, I'm being told 739, you know, ARV is about 850. Um, and I'm like, okay, 739 doesn't work. Okay, but they were saying 539. I'm like, okay, well, that, that'll that work. That's a number that'll work. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I can work with that. Um, because then what I can do is that, okay, so this situation, let me go up here. So we'll look at this situation here, this property now. Okay, so seller wants 739 okay right that's not going to work i want to just leave 850 up here um so that isn't going to work but possibly they might do 539 for whatever reason i have no idea so i'm like okay great 539 is going to be a better one depending you know because of what you're wanting to do with the rehab so they came in and uh, this this uh, partner here came in and said well i'm looking at 49 k as a rehab well it's a three thousand three thousand uh foot square foot property right um who knows the a very simple way for uh for calculating a re, uh, rehab anybody know know very simple basic it's kind of like getting a quick mail on the on the yeah. whole situation and if you yeah. guys have been listening to jamil you guys would know there's different numbers out there, $1.25 a square foot, $1.50 a square foot. Right. Well, Arizona itself right now is usually about 35, uh, 45, and about 55. Okay. This is a mild, medium, and Those a high. Those are your, like your numbers, Marie. Okay. That, is that there are you saying 35k or you're saying 35? Hold on. these are dollars just 35 dollars per, per square foot. foot yeah so what you do is you take that and then you just times that by the square footage of the house uh not square foot whatever um so such as if you got a 2000 um 20 uh 2500 square foot house 2500 times 35 that's going to give you an eighty-seven fifty. Eighty, uh, sorry, eighty-seven five, eighty-seven thousand dollars uh, square foot uh, for a mild repair. Now, if you do a forty-five 
times that same 2,500, that's all getting to be 112. 112, 500, whatever. And then you do basically 55 times that same square footage. Oops. And that there's going to give you about 137, 500. So now you're sitting there going, why is this only 49,000? Exactly. So that's what I'm kind of looking at, okay? And, and these numbers here, I just did on a 2,500 square foot and I should have just used the 3,000, but still you guys get the idea. So I'm like, okay, well, first off your rehab there, I don't care if it's 3,000 square foot, I don't care. That's, you know, that's going to be pretty, pretty wrong, especially for what they were telling me. And so they didn't even, they were, you know, blown away just by this. And it's like, this is just something basic. I'm like, these are Arizona numbers. If you ever uh, listen and look at Jamil, this is what he goes by. Him and Pace will actually walk properties together and Jamil will have it done in about five minutes. Pace will sit there and, and uh, do a whole deal analyzer and everything like what we do. And they come out to be, you know, roughly about five to ten thousand dollars difference. And this is something that you guys might want to try too. Try it. Walk your property. Go ahead and walk your property. Do your uh, deal analyzer or your repair estimator, repair estimator, and then do do the do this up here. Do the um, you know, I guess I don't know whatever the round you know round it to uh, by the square footage. Round it by the square footage and see how close your numbers are. And then that way then too, you, you also know though too, looking at it, you're like, hey, here's a mild rehab. Here's more of a medium. I might have to take out a wall or something. This is going to be probably a, a more of a complete gut, okay? So over here, back to that deal, I'm like, okay, 739 doesn't do anything, especially if you wanna do some sort of rehabbing to it. Does it need it? I haven't seen pictures of the inside. I'm just going by what somebody else is saying because I'm helping them structure this deal and so by this i'm like well we can get it at the 539 and we can do what's called a novation basically the seller okay this is how a novation works there's more to it but this is a basic rundown seller may keeps the property okay you're going to pay the 539. You're agreeing to, to pay them that. They're, so the seller wants the 539, but you have to do the work to it. So you can pay them this and they're gonna still maintain possession of the property. And this is where it comes, it, it's, it's uh, like I said, is the creative side, the creative deal structuring. Okay, how, how is this going to work, right? So seller, you're going to, you're going to maintain the property. Maria, you're going to maintain this property. It's going to stay in your name. So it's going to stay right there in Maria's name. Okay. You want 539. I'm going to go ahead and come in with my guys, my money to do the rehab of, you know, whatever, 120,000, 120 K. We don't need to do too terribly much. Um, when we sell it, we're going to go ahead and turn around and sell this for, um 850 and the thing is is that from the whole from the whole beginning you're just giving them what they want this is uh a deal how you can make where you're not having to finance and purchase the whole property right out front so we're going to do that arv of, of of 850 right so we're in contract here okay this is what i'm projecting that we're going to be doing okay so the 539 minus, uh, let's just call it uh, 539 minus 850. Okay, that gives us 439 is a difference, it is a different split between their 459, right? So that's going to be our split right there, is that 459. Okay, well, now I, we still got to come in, come in with the repairs and everything. And so we're going to add in, uh, I'm going to come in with, the 120, 20 for the repairs, for the rehab. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also pay because I, I want the seller to agree to this. For that six months, uh, Maria, um, I'm going to go ahead and pay that 
uh, let's just say $2,000 for um, is what your mortgage is. I'm going to go ahead and pay that $2,000 for the, uh, which is a mortgage during the rehab of six months, right? So how, do, how is this whole thing coming out? What would you normally have to come through, come into this whole deal with? 539 plus your rehab, 120. And let's just say another 50 for miscellaneous stuff. Okay, so uh, we'll make that one 540. Keep it round. So 540, 56, 79, 10, 11, 11, 6, 7. So we would have to come in seven. Geez, I can't write today. Seven, 10 is going to be what we have to come in and bring in, right? Eight, well, 710 is what we're going to have to come in and bring in. And for what? An 850. So that's what? Uh, 140 split, 140 split, right? Yeah. So that, so that, that there would be a $140,000 profit that we're looking at. So let me ask you this. How many are you going to be able to get this number right here? The 710. What percentage are you also going to be uh, looking at? Even if it is hard money. Okay. What do you, what else do you have? You got your points. You got your origination fees. You know, all your other fees. Okay. That's why I threw in the other 50 grand there. You know, so you have all that. Okay, now remember you got to pay two thousand dollars for the next uh, six months. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, okay, so we got another twelve thousand, another twelve thousand in there, right? Because we got to pay that that the whole time. So we're actually at seven twenty-two, right? So that's seven hundred twenty-two thousand dollars that you got to come to the table with. What if? Uh, all you came to the table with was 120 and you only paid interest on the 120. What do you, what do you, what do you want to do? You want to get all the money, take possession of the property, hold it and, and have to pay all those extra taxes and all that stuff to, to get that. Because remember, you're still going to, you still got to come in pay off that mortgage and everything and, and take care of all that stuff. I would rather come in and, and just pay, the 120 for the interest or with the interest with the uh, property plus the uh, let's just uh, one tw uh, let's throw the 12 in there too. So 132. So we got the 132 is going to be that total because we're going to pay that guy's mortgage at the same time that we're doing the repairs, right? So we got $132,000. $132,000 financed even at 12%. It's still a lot cheaper than 720 at 12%. Right? So why not let the seller be your bank on this? Seller's going to keep their, their money in place at the 539, 540. We'll just call it 540. We're, the seller's going to keep their money in, in place there at, at 540. Their benefit is that they're getting to keep that extra $2,000 monthly payment that you're making for them. They're keeping that in their pocket. So at the end of the deal, they're actually, they're actually up what? 12,000? Oh, one more. They're actually up 12,000. Pretty nice little bonus there, right? For them to incentive to keep their money in and for them not to do a direct sale. So now, you turn around and sell that. You have the original lien for the five thirty nine that you're creating with the seller for the for the uh, because of the contract. So you have the five thirty nine that you five forty that you're selling to them, okay, for the five forty, and you have your payment of the one thirty two for your re rehab and all that other stuff, right? So then now. Six seventy-two is going to be your overall total. So, if that's what you actually spent into this property, right? 
at the end of the deal, at the, when you're, when it's being sold, you're, you you got to pay out the 540 here. You got to pay uh, pay back your lender there. That's going to be a total of 672. Now, when you do this at 850, that's now what a hundred. 178,000 as a profit. What did you actually pay interest on? You're only paying monthly uh, interest on this, but yet you can structure this deal however it is that you want. Now, yeah, so Chris, say you, yeah. Sorry. So, specifically, as far as structuring this deal, are you using a purchase and sale agreement up front with a note? to the buyer or you're saying it's staying in their name. So is there like a contract for deed for a later date? Like what are those specific? Um, and then I don't know if you're doing a split of that profit. So what you're actually doing is writing an equitable title, equitable interest title in there. Okay. okay. So what you're actually doing is you're writing a, basically a note in there saying that you have equitable interest in that property. You're bringing money in, you're doing this fix. You have every right to that property is what the same as same thing as the seller does. Okay. Essentially it's not a mechanics lien because they just, that just says that they have uh, that they got to get paid, but an equitable title, equitable interest title means that you have the same right same as a uh, seller. So that means that you have the same, the same right as the seller. You have every right to be in there. You have everything to do. So that's is what this I a recorded document? Yes, this is all recorded into title. Okay. So it goes, all this goes into title um, and, and it, it's recorded in there under that whole property. This one here, you're probably gonna have to pay, you know, whatever it is, maybe two thousand dollars, to put that, you know, to put uh, an equitable title on there. And so, but it's worth it. But now, do you also have a a lien for the five thirty nine or that five forty purchase price? Like, is that um, a promissory note or something with the original seller? Essentially, it's just a promissory note. Okay. The reason why is because you you're in contract to sell this at 539. You're in contract to sell this to the seller at, uh, for 539 or buy it off. I'm sorry, at 539. Okay. That's what your contract is. Is basically, hey, I promise to pay you the 539. Da 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 da. da. Okay. That there then again is also then recorded at title. So that's there. Um, and so with that. The biggest reason for doing this type of deal, this, this, this novation here, is so you don't have to come in with this full amount here. This here would be the amount that you're coming in with. So, okay, so as, for tighter, that... as for tighter margins. So instead of yeah. going through and, be, and having to pay all that extra, uh, to try to raise up all that money and the capital, all hard money and stuff like that. You can utilize a private money for your smaller amount for your rehab. And now the, the difference, so you said this would be an 850 ARV and you're only 672 into it, maybe some, plus some interest and whatever, but Yeah, that, so let's just gotta make that 700 then. Just, yeah, just so, so then around. you're, are you splitting that 150K with the, owner or are you just still only giving them that 539 because that's what you promised them on the promissory just that 539 just okay 539 so now the if they say if if they say well you can get more for that i know i know you know you're gonna get you know 850 or so okay hey look sir okay look marie if i if i get more than eight uh 825 Anything above 825, I will split with you 50-50 as a bonus. Now, I have no reason to try to get 800 or 825 or anything like that. You know, I still want to try to get as max as I can. So if I can sell it for 850, guess what? That 25K, we split. 12.5, 25, 
12.5. That's also more incentive for them to keep their money in play there too. And that's what I mean. You can structure this whole deal up however you want. You know, they want, you know, let's say they want 10K down now. Okay, you can do that. If they want 20K down, you can do that. You could sit there and say, I'm not going to give you anything. I'll give you, let's, let's just say, I'll give you 600 on the backside. You want five, 540, I'll give you 600. Okay, great. So then now, again, I don't have, to, I'm not having to pay interest or anything on this, on this money here. So that's that 600 that this, no, the seller's already got in there. So when I'm all said and done, now I'm into it for, for the 130. So that's 730. I'm still making 120, uh, 120 K on that. Even if I'm giving them 600. So it's, it's the power of being able to structure these deals in various ways that gives it, that gives it the power of, of, you know, essentially your negotiation tactics. Yeah. That and and I never, interest and, title, Chris, do you know, is that only good for like a certain period of time or something? Like, do you have to complete that flip and sell it within an allotted time frame or anything like that? Um, no. Okay. No. And yes. Why? Because guess what? I'm going to go ahead and do this with you, Maria. Um, six, uh, six months is going to be my time. If I go over that, I will then, um, one, I continue to, you know, obviously I'm going to have to continue to make that $2,000 payments, which means that's still, again, more money in your pocket. So again, that's another $2,000 that's back into your pocket. Okay, let's talk about that super quick because this is my question about that you guys you're equitable partners but and you and so in this scenario you're paying that two thousand dollars well what if you stop paying it and the house starts going into foreclosure because you can't afford it number one or number two what if they're paying it how can you guarantee that if this isn't the deal where you know they're still paying it for some reason that um they're still paying it so you're protected uh one the in, the insurance you know, first off, you sell, you're always going to put insurance on it, on any property. Okay. First off, but two, if I've got equitable, uh, EQ title and I still have full rights to that property, I can still do whatever I want with that. I've still have a ownership of equitable title. Okay. So Liz, you, you buy a house, Liz house in your name, right? Mm -hmm. Then you come in and add on your husband. Sorry, handwriting sucks. Uh, you come in and add on your husband. Okay, now he is on title now too, right? He is now basically on title just because of you. He had nothing to do with this, no scoring, no nothing. It's equitable title. He still has every right to that property as much as you do. Yeah, I think Liz is asking, though, like if you're paying them $2,000 a month and let's say they still have a mortgage on it, are you um, paying that through escrow to make sure that the mortgage payment is being paid so they're not kind of like screwing you over at some point? Oh, yeah, yes, um, yes, yes. Everything's going through, go, everything goes through title. Okay, uh, Liz is going to loan me the uh, 150 on this property, right? To do the rehab. She's going to be my partner in it. Guess what? She's going to send that into title. And then it's going to come into me. So guess what? Now, because she paid this into title, she is now a lien holder on that. There, That is actually there. So when I go through to sell this on the back end, that money still has to be paid off. Right. So everything you do goes through there. So guess what? Um, you know, bank, you know, uh, the bank goes in, I, I make those, you know, mortgage payments. I'm making that uh, 2K to the bank for that mortgage. It doesn't go to the seller. It doesn't go to the seller. It goes to the bank, not to the seller. 
Yeah. If they want ten thousand dollars up front, you can do ten thousand dollars up front. Again, you're writing that into contract. So with these contracts, you can write anything that you want. Because here, here's the number one thing. You know what a contract is? Who can really tell me what a contract is? Well, it's a promise there. It's a promise for some, one thing to another. It's, you know, I'm, you know, yeah. <clears throat> so set of instructions for the title company. That's, that's all it is. Who has the ultimate say in anything there? The title company or attorney, whichever, whichever state that you're in. So they actually have full, full control of that. What they write is bonding. But that's all a contract is. A contract is just a set of instructions for title. So guess what? Do you think I can write, um, every time I'm in Phoenix, uh, Liz buys Chris Sushi? Yes, I can. I can actually put that in, put that in a contract. You sign off on it, it goes into title. It doesn't matter. We can write up anything that we want. That's the beauty part of this whole creative financing. So again, you know, I can take all this, you know, take all this money here. So this, that 2000 there is going into the bank. You know, the, uh, the 2K that's going into the bank. It doesn't go into the seller, but guess what? It's technically is because guess what? Is that seller having to pay the bank? No, we're paying, we're making that payment. That money just gets to stay in the seller's pocket. So is that more interesting to be able to pay that mortgage for them, for them to be able to keep, you know, for you to be able to do a structure like this? Yeah, that's what I thought that, that you, then you're going to pay the mortgage. So you don't yeah. have to worry. Yeah, I'm you're not paying not them anything. Yeah, because you're paying the mortgage, basically. Exactly. I'm going to go ahead and pay that bank mortgage. And the seller does, isn't getting anything out of there. So they're not getting it. They just get to keep their own money. Okay, so that's essentially what you know how innovation works. So now, Chris, uh, just out of curiosity, how does the insurance work on that process? Do you get added to their existing homeowners insurance, or do you have to pull a separate policy for the rehab portion? I guess that's about to take place. Do you know the specifics of that? Yeah. No, I don't have to be added to uh, to be added to their insurance. I don't have to. Because guess what? You know what I can do, Marie? I can take out a hundred thousand dollar insurance policy on you. I don't need your approval. I don't need your permission. So I can yeah. put it on. I can. I'm going to put my own insurance policy, my insurance on that house just for what your uh equitable interest is or maybe like equals yeah. the amount of the 100 for, for my money so right. chris how many of these people that, that you're working with are actually in arrears or are not paying the mortgage when when you start it depends you know, like this one, this guy here, he's not, he doesn't have any arrears. He doesn't have any, he doesn't have anything behind. So, but, so, yes. so the, this process works if it works for the homeowner, basically. Yeah. If you can wait for your money, Gail, if you can wait for your, for your $540, uh, wait for your money, I will make that $2,000 a month, um, payment to the bank and that that two thousand dollars that you be paying is to stay with gail well and i guess in that scenario too they they're they have to move out so if right. you're rehabbing the house so right. now they have to come up with they have to so if you're paying the mortgage of two thousand dollars then what they're essentially saving I mean, they're buying, they're getting something else, or they're saying to you, I need $10,000 up front because I'm buying this house. You paying that mortgage is fine because I need to pay 
um, rent or mortgage on wherever I'm moving into. Yes, exactly. So yeah. you can always, you know, they may have another place, you know, again, it all depends on the deals. So I will tell you this right now. Okay. Traditional wholesale, you start off here and just go right to there because there's nothing else in the middle. You're putting it under contract. You're gonna put it under contract, sell the contract and then get paid. And then it's just over there to the back end. With creative deal structuring, you know, with this whole sub two creative deal structuring is there's no straight line to it. Okay, you have to, as a wholesaler, you have to come in at the, you know, 70, you know, at, at the 70 cents, you know, on the dollar or 60 cents or 50, whatever it is, wherever you're at, because that does vary everywhere. So instead of coming in, you know, you have to come in at 70 on the dollar to sit there and try to make any sort of deal. So a $300,000 house has to come down to um, 220 roughly right there, right? So as a wholesaler, you have to get that there, okay? And then you can add on your fee plus your 10 to whatever, and then sell it to this guy, you know, uh, the end uh, flipper for 230, right? So now you've made your money. I can put my money into it and still make, and still make uh, money back. That's how a basic wholesale deal works. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. With the whole creative financing here, it can go any multitudes of ways to be able to get to that point. Guess what? Can you do VA loans? Yes, I can work with those. I can do you know sub twos on those. I can do uh, wholesales on those. I can do you know multitudes of things. Um, you know there's there's uh, loan mods. loan okay loan mods loan modifications there's uh refinancing chris do you find with these that you usually have to you know give them a, a chunk of money uh to to be able to move out to get a new place um or, or an incentive basically i mean obviously they're getting more for their property um than they would normally would you know, if they sold it um, at a discount, but, you know, almost like a balloon payment, you know, now and a balloon payment later, and obviously it would help with someone's credit um, if they had poor credit, but, you know. No. Yes. So essentially this doesn't work for everybody. It really doesn't. I've talked to people. I only want, I want my 500 K. I want my 500K, that's it. No if, ands, or buts. Seller finance, no. Um, take a lease option, no. Uh, you know, sub two, no. Um, you know, pay half, you know, half price. You know, uh, half down and then carry the rest, no. They want 500 now, okay? Then it has to be retail, I guess, if they're not willing yeah, to. Yeah, but they don't want to deal with the realtors. Okay, fine, great. That doesn't matter to me. Where does where did where do these creative deals work? Um, Rochelle, do you have um, let's see. Uh, do you have uh, shitty tenants? Um. Do you have tenants that aren't paying that you always have to call them up and remind them? No, and I've them been I've been fortunate. My I only have three rentals and they've they've all been good. So hopefully it'll stay that way. Okay, so right now you don't have any pain. Um, you know what? Uh, what are you looking to do uh, with, with 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 selling this property? You know what? Yeah. Do you need to need need to want? um or and don't that changes it you know yeah exactly if you need to okay there's mm -hmm. your motivation mm -hmm. why why do you have to sell it well because you got shitty tenants mm -hmm. shitty tenants um medical emergencies um 
you know, family, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So it all depends. Now, is this pain? Is all this down here pain? Yeah. Well, if there's no pain, then there's really nothing to do. I just turn around and follow back up with them. And that's why I say it all depends. You know, we could sit here and go through, you know, uh, a deal like this, this uh, novation, and go over the various ways of how I can structure this. I can structure this, you know, a hundred different ways. But until you can really find out what's going on with them, their pain, their motivation, their reasons, whatever, you don't know how to structure this. That's why creative deal structuring is probably a better aspect of this because what's your pain and motivation here? Man, you're behind six months. Okay, you're behind in payment six months. Okay, well, how about I help you out there? Because guess what? What's going to happen? Who's going to get the house? The bank or who? Me. The bank or me is going to get the house. You keep, you don't make those payments. The bank's going to come in and take that, take that right back from you. Or I can come in, help you out, pay your six months, be able to, be able to turn around and pay that six months that you're behind, save your credit. So I can pay those behinds, uh, you know, help you get set up for a new place, set you up in a new place to help you out, new home, let you stay there for two, three months, whatever, two to three months. Okay. Help you again, you know, help you find the place and possibly put some cash in your pocket. What's the bank going to do? Is the bank going to do any of this here for you? No, the bank's just going to come by and take the keys from you and kick you out and call it good. And Chris, so what are you saying to them to find out their, I mean, because I mean, some people, what are you saying to find out their pain and motivation? Like, how are you? Because, you know, I think, you know, that denial can come in. Oh, I'm really not that bad yet. Like, how are you getting that out of them? What's your, what's happening there? That's just having the conversation with them, you know. I'm just asking the same questions, but in such a strategic manner, if you, you know, uh, uh, a lot of it, you'll get out of that book in the beginning that I was telling you about, the the with the Sandler method. And because of that, you'll get a better understanding of of, of what it is that you're actually saying and why. Okay, so you sit there and Liz demands something from me. She demands two hundred thousand dollars. Well, okay, great. How would you, you know, how do I go about doing two hundred, you know, giving you two hundred thousand dollars? Okay, well, that scenario right there, I'm putting the putting you in control of the situation. How am I supposed to come up and give you two hundred thousand dollars? How do you want me to give you to the $200,000? Liz, it goes back to never split the difference, right? It's all about the wording and the play on exactly. words and reframing it and letting them. Right. And that's exactly it. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm kind of getting at. Like, what is, I mean, are you, so first, you know, is this somebody you found? So when you found them or are they finding you and when, you know, how's that conversation starting off to get them to, yeah, so. Um, guess what? You send me a referral. You send me to somebody. I call them up. Hey, uh, how's it going? What you know? What where did you and Liz leave off? Well, she she was saying that she could offer me two fifty for the house. Okay, that's too low for me. Okay, great, seller. What you know? What do you want there, seller? Okay, well, I was looking more along the lines of three hundred. Okay, so you know. Um, you know, I got the notes from you that says 100K in repairs. And then you said about 
uh, about four, let, let's just, we'll call it good. We'll, we'll say 425. So we don't have much room in this uh, to make a deal here. So we'll say that it was uh, 425 as an ARV. And the 100K would be a very mild, you know, being very, very conservative on this repair. So we have a 425, they want 300 itself. Okay, great. Now, does this work as really doing a flip? No. But what, what's really wrong with the house here, seller? Well, really nothing. It does need some updating itself. Okay. Just like what? Paint floor and stuff like that? Okay, great. We'll drop that down to 30K. And then how about we turn around and we just make this a rental? Okay. Because guess what? Let's just say that the, you know, uh, ARV is 425. Okay. Their mortgage is a thousand dollars. A thousand dollar mortgage, right? Okay. That they still owe for the, you know, let's just call that, let's be generous, Joe, let's call that 250 that they still owe. Okay, so they're wanting, you know, $50,000 there. Well, one, you can give them the $50,000 and call it good and take it over and, and continue to do that. But what if I just turn around and go, okay, great, I can do $30,000 into this, keep it as a rental because the mortgage itself is 15 and let's say rent is 18. Okay, now uh, 18 from the thousand, that's $800. That's the mortgage right there. Let's take off another hundred for the insurance. Um, another hundred for the um, vacancy and, and uh, you know, and repairs and stuff that we need, you know, for uh, regular stuff. Okay, so then now, now we're down to 600 on that. Okay, so now am I, I'm uh, profiting 600 on this. Janeth, do you, do you want a property that pay, that's gonna cash flow you $600 a month? Yes. Okay. I want a $10,000 assignment fee. Right? So Janeth is going to go ahead and pay this to me. She's got this whole house that's cash flowing 600 for $10,000. What am I doing with this deal? I am seller financing to Janeth utilizing what they still owe to the bank, right? And the the seller's extra money, the extra 50K that they wanted, right? So I'm actually seller financing this for that 300 to Janeth, and I'm taking a $10,000 fee. Did I just, what did I just do here? I locked up this contract, contract, right? It works. It, it works. It, it, it flows. You don't even have to do the 30, you put the 30 K in there, but guess what? She says that she wants it. She'll put the 30 K into it itself. My assignment fee is going to be the 10 K right here. What did I just do with this deal? You just wholesaled it to yourself. No, I just wholesaled it to Janeth. Oh, to Janeth. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So now she got, she's got this rental that she paid me 10 K for. She didn't have to go to the bank. You know, she didn't have to go to the bank. She didn't have to get credit or anything. Uh, she didn't have to put down, you know, 25, you know, uh, whatever it is, 25%, whatever it is, uh, 15, 25%, whatever it is for your down, because it's not a residency. It is a rental. So remember it's an investment. So that goes up. So did you have to pay any of that? No, she just paid me that 10K fee and I just did a wholesale deal to her for this whole thing. Creative financing. Again, there's different ways of structuring these deals, okay? Depending on the pain and the motivation and their time and their price. Okay, so again, even if they said, you know, um, let's say they owed uh, the 425. Let's just say it was 425. 
but they can do it at a thousand, you know, uh, a thousand is that, but rental rates are 1800. Okay, great. She's still uh, minus everything. She's making 600 there. Again, I can still turn around and sell this to her for 10 grand. And guess what? I don't even care in my eyes what this makes, what the cost of this is. Okay, so let me do this then. Who wants... Um, Okay, who wants a property that's going to cash flow $600 a month in their pocket? Me. I'll take one. Okay. Well, are, you willing to, are you willing to pay me 10K? Yes. Okay. Do you want to, is there anything else you want to know about this property? what it rents for. Okay, we well, can do that. Well, you don't even care. He's saying it's six month, $600 a month cash flow anyway. I would exactly. want to know if it's I mean. gonna, is it gonna appreciate at all? So oh, yeah, sure. well, we all, we all know that it is. So 600 a month and I want 10K. Are you willing to pay me 10K for that property? Yes. So, the um, let's say the the mortgage, the remaining balance on that is one point two million. Do you still want that property? Who doesn't want that property now? Good, because all that matters is the cash flow. Guess what? This whole deal itself is structured out in one. 1.2 times 50 years at 3%, which comes out to be, let's just call it $2.5 million. But you're cash flowing in pocket 600. That's already after your taxes and everything. That's cash flow in your pocket. See what I mean? It doesn't matter. Or what this price is or what this price is because uh, it's still going to cash flow right there i care what that is guess what what else am i doing i get the depreciation there's people out there that will take and write and they purchase properties accordingly to depreciation okay they will uh, take all this depreciation and let's say that they make uh 1.5 million a year right but business write-offs and depreciation and everything comes out that they made 50k for the year now they're only paying taxes on that versus the 1.5 there's people that focus on this type of strategy too So it doesn't matter what you make, but you have to do that. Okay, so we all see these uh, stupid, uh, you know, all these rich, you know, super bloating rich people, right? And they're uh, a gold uh, uh, McLaren. They have a 200 foot, freaking yacht just so you know my husband's mclaren is red <laughs> oh yeah that's right huh so so you so you got that. i do not have a 200 foot yacht though i'm not that rich <laughs> right um so then the point is is that you know and then they you know buy land to put a stupid house on and i know this for a fact because um, when I was in my, uh, building days, there's a place out in gold Canyon. If you guys are familiar with gold Canyon, there's a house on top of this one Hill. It's the only house out there, brand new piece of land, 
um, we were on the, the project all the way through. The funny thing is, is that when I actually met the developer that was there, I just asked one simple question. Is this somebody famous or just somebody with stupid amounts of money? He said, yes. Is there somebody that's that stupid amounts of money? I'm like, wow. He goes, you know how long they're going to be here for? I go, what? Two weekends out of the year. This big ass freaking house that you could park a whole bunch of a whole crap load of stuff in. I have seen that. Okay. Why? Because they have to spend money because the more money that they have in the bank, in the bank, the more that they have to pay taxes on. So guess what? If you have a $1 million and you put, you know, 1 million and you put 900,000 into everything else, then what are you being taxed on? You're only being taxed on that 100,000. That's why they're always out there buying stupid stuff, investing it in other things. Because as long as they don't have that money liquid in their hands, it's just everything is just asset, asset based. That's why you can sit there and be a millionaire. You can be a millionaire and make 50K a year because you're dispersing all the rest of your money into everything else. And yet, you at the end of it, you're only being taxed on that 50K. Guess what? You're not paying taxes on the rest of everything because that's not in your bank. And that's why, that's why the rich people do that. Um, so let's see, uh, who's got another deal? So, okay, really quick. So do we understand that start to finish, finish, um, there is several different ways to get there. A to B, okay. You have A here and you have, have B over here, okay? Guess what? There's a mountain. There's a mountain right there. Can't go through that, right? So we gotta go up and around, okay? Now there's a big tree. Okay, then we gotta go up and around that. And then, you know, there, there's a big, you know, uh, gap over here, you know, big old cliff gap, okay? Now we gotta figure out how to go and get across that. Okay, um, you know, so forth and so forth. But it's still an, uh, another way to get to B, as long as we still get to B, which is A, we're in contact with the seller, and B, we're closing a deal. Creative deal structuring is figuring all this out, how you're going to go from here, and then you may have to do uh, other things, such as, okay, great, I cannot assume this loan, you know, this loan that's here, I can't uh, assume it. So guess what I got to do? You know, I, I don't want to give you any money. Go get it, uh, refi your house. And then I'll come in and I'll take it over sub, sub two. Guess what? Seller gets their money out of their house. And I get a, a, a property with a whole brand new loan and everything with a brand new 30-year loan that I can still cash flow. As long as I can cash flow on that, okay, then I've still got a deal. So then seller got their money. I got a house. And I'm cash flowing. So the biggest thing with these deals is trying to figure out how to get from A to B. Because there's so many different ways. Is there pain? You know, uh, is there pain? No. Okay, we can go through that. You know, we, we just go over that. Okay. What do they need help with? Okay, they have a financials. Okay, so there's uh, no pain. Okay, so there's no pain, but they do have some financials. So we go through, we got to go through that and figure that out. Okay, disposition. How can we make money? Okay, how can we make money? Okay, well, once we figure that out, then we're another step closer. Okay. Is every house going to be a fix and flip? No. Guess what? Hey, Maria, I got this house, you know, in downtown Phoenix would be, would be perfect. I don't know shit about Airbnbs. You want it? It's, you know, take a look at it. Guess what? What do I do there? I can make money by wholesaling, by wholesaling 
uh, you know, that property to Marie for money to cash flow. Do I want to deal with Airbnbs? No. Marie does Airbnbs. Okay, so Marie does Airbnbs. Okay, guess what? Did I get it all the way through there? Did I take care of their, the, the seller's financial issues? Yes. Did I make money? Yes. Did I wholesale it out so Maria can make money on the back end? Yes. Did we actually come to an end there? So we started and we ended, right? So again, there's just all these different ways to go through there. Is there pain? Yes. Then, and there's no financial issues, but there's pain, you know? They tired, you know, they're old, you know, they're old. Uh, they want to retire. Okay. Guess what? Do people have families, right? People have families, right? They usually have, a, you know, kids, grandkids, great, great grandkids. <laughs> okay. So, a lot of times people don't understand though either what goes on with these deals. Okay. So they want, you know, all their cash out right now. Well, you know, I can give you some money right now up front and, you know, let me make payments to you on the rest. Okay. But what happens? What happens there? What happens if they die before the house is paid off? Guess what? They're going to make a trust that's going to go to the kids or to the grandkids, or to the great-great-grandkids. Because guess what? Even though I'm making payments, I'm making payments on this house, guess what I still have to do? Even though they die, the owner dies, even if I take, uh, take over the mortgage in a subject too, you think it matters if they die? No, because I still have to make those payments to the bank to the trust, to wherever, right? So this is the big, biggest problem that people you know, see is, is like, well, yeah, I want to get out of here. I'm tired of dealing with these tenants, but they don't want, but they don't, they want to get all the money out. They want to get it all. Well, I don't want to pay them all, but guess what? I'll give you, I can give you some so you can be happy. And you can be making money along the way. And guess what? Again, when when it, you die, then it just continues over here. It's not like I, I, you kid, you die and I get to, um, I don't have to make payments anymore. It doesn't even matter if it's seller financing, because that house is is still owned by somebody. What happens if the house that I have, um, you know, is is is, is owed? is owned by somebody. Well, guess what? If, if, uh, if we're doing a seller finance and that, and I'm still making payments to somebody, guess what? If that, if that seller dies, who do, who, who do I have to pay? Okay. Well, who's taking over their, their, the, the estate, their affairs, their funds, their, you know, everything else that they have, guess what? The kids. And guess what? So then now my money that I'm paying, goes in over here because they died. But I still have to pay this because there's a contract in place. There's title. There's nothing in the, there's nothing in these titles that say you die. I don't have to pay. There's nothing that in these contracts that say that. So we're not, there's nothing that we're taking over here. We still have to fulfill that original contract. We still have to fulfill that original contract. But what happens if, if I disappear? If I get abducted by aliens, right? If I get abducted by aliens, okay. I get abducted by aliens and they go and take off and stuff. I'm never to be found. Well, guess what? What happens? Uh, they get the property 
back. What about the money I paid them? They keep that. What about all the repairs I did? They keep that too. I stop. I stopped forfeit. You know, I, I just forfeit my payments. They get the house back. They keep it. Okay. So what is it that they have to lose? Really nothing, right? Again, there's so many ways to structure these deals. That's why I don't, you know, I quit calling it uh, creative financing because there's so many different ways to structure these deals. Okay. That's why I like to call it creative deal structure because how you acquire is going to be dependent upon how you disposition and how you disposition is going to be depending on how you acquire. Chris, are you finding any rules of thumbs on like how much a end buyer is willing to pay uh, on a wholesale fee, depending on the cash flow or the deal structure? There, there is no set parameter. There's no seventy percent. There's no formula for that. You just throw it out there. People will be like, "Hey, I'll give you ten grand," and you're like, "Well, I want fifteen. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you ten grand for it. Okay, great, sold." Yeah, is so is ten kind of your your personal kind of rule? I want to at least make that? ten. Yeah, I want to at least make ten. Yeah. So here's the other thing too. Who wants to see a uh, who wants to see a really cool deal? Here's a really good one. So the uh, a the ARV is we'll just go three hundred. They owe 300 uh, mortgage uh, mortgage is say 2000. Okay. Um, rent is 2000. And they're 110% motivated to sell you, okay? Does anybody understand how these deals here don't work? Why they can't turn around, why this person cannot turn around and sell it with, with a realtor? People understand that? I, I see you shaking your head, Marie. Well, the point is, is that ARV is 300. They owe 300. They're going to have to pay, you know, 30,000 for, uh, or, you know, uh, 30,000 for uh, uh, realtor fees. I didn't mean 30, 30%, but realtor yeah, and, and fees, right? So what does that leave? What does that leave them? 270, correct? So that means that the seller is going to have to pay. You know, what? He's going to have to pay. 30k to sell their house okay so we we can all agree that that there is not a deal right that doesn't even work there right well you want to see how i can make money on that 300 as the price, um, as the ARV, um, okay, 2000, 2000 is, uh, 2K is the uh, uh, payment, right? So let's say I do this, 
Um, Gail, is Gail still in here? Wait, no. what do you mean payment? Is it the down payment? Is it no, the no, mortgage it's, a, it's, a, it's a mortgage payment. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, wh okay. Where I'm confused is, is you got 2,000 mortgage payment and 2,000 um, uh, possible total rents, and you're going to have some times when the place isn't rented, then you're going to lose your renter every once in a while. Right. So, um, yeah, so I mean, that's, it's, that's, it's great whether paying the paying the mortgage for you, but there, there's going to be those months where I, I guess it doesn't look like it cash flows anywhere. So how, how do you get the cash flow? It, it, exactly. So the rent is the mortgage is two thousand. The rent is two thousand. Right. So there's no money to be made. So because that they're all cancels out, even if I own that, guess what? If I own that, then what do I have to do? I still have to pay insurance. I still have to pay taxes. I still have to pay the, the vacancy and repairs, right? Okay, so obviously that doesn't work because I'm not making any money. So that whole thing just does not work. So what I'm, ta what I'm talking about here is that, okay, now I'll, take this, I'll still take this property. It doesn't cash flow, right? 300000 doesn't doesn't cash flow, no rent, no nothing like that. But here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So the the mortgage payment itself is, um, let's say it's it's well it it is it is two thousand, but we'll put it at let's say two percent, right? That's a pretty good rate for today. So that's the their overall setup here: three hundred thousand dollar house, ARV. That's what they owe. And uh, $2,000 uh, is the mortgage payment slash what rent would be. So there's obviously no cash flow. But here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to look for a particular buyer on this. Okay. What I mean by this particular buyer is I'm looking for an end buyer. Hey, Gail, how's your credit? Um, well, my credit is pretty good. But okay. So, so what, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here, here, I'm hearing you say is there's buyers out there that are just buying properties to hold um, mostly for tax purposes? No. No. Okay. Sorry. Well, this is going to so, be a tenant buyer, a tenant buyer that can't necessarily get the best loan. Doesn't, you know, doesn't well, it's have not going to be a tenant buyer. It's going to be what what's called a wrap buyer. Okay. What I'm going to do here is okay. So Gail, no offense. Your credit is 500, but you've been working at uh, at the dealership for 10 years. You're good for it. You know, you're just going through times and everything, but you you, you make pretty good money. You just got shitty credit. And let's say, hey, Gail, can you make, uh, can you afford, let's say, um, 2,200? Can you, can you afford $2,200 a month, Gail? Ah, uh, sure. Why not? Okay, so Gail can make this for, for 2200 So you know what I'm going to go ahead and do? Is I can take that 300 and I'm going to add 50 k onto that for a total of $350 that it, that's being financed there. You know what I'm also going to do with that too is I'm going to take that 2% and I'm also going to give this to Gail. I'm just using round numbers here. I don't want to go into pull the calculator and get into all these actual calculations here. But I'm going to raise this up from 2% to say 5% right there. Okay. So now he's actually, Galden is now buying this house from me at 350 at 5%. Okay. I have it under contract for 300, you know, 300K. The uh, mortgage payment, mortgage payment is the 2000, right? But he can afford to pay me 2200, right? So what happens to his payment? His payment goes into a uh, goes into servicing company. I don't touch it. He doesn't pay me or anything. The servicing company pays the two uh, the 2k to the bank. And the other 200 to me. So basically, you're looking for a uh, a buyer with bad credit, and and you're doing a, a wrap. 
Yep. Okay. So I'm wrapping in 50, 50 grand and I'm also wrapping in 3% there. And, and how long does it take you to find uh, somebody if you lock up a deal like this? Sometimes not long at all. Wow. <laughs> there's, certain, okay. there's certain places, there's certain places that to find these people really good and really quick. So we I mean, this, is, this is a lease option basically. And you're doing a wrap. No. Lease. no. How is it different? Lease option, you still own the property. Lease option, lease option. Um, let's just do a five year uh, lease option. So five years lease or rent that you still own with the, with the option there to buy. This one here, I put it from contract. I made my, you know, added in my money and then I sold this to Gail. Okay. And I sold it to Gail. Um, do I own the property? No. Exactly. But but let me ask you this. It, so say, who owns say, this now? Say, 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 well, right now it would be me. Exactly. But say, but say for some stupid reason I couldn't afford the twenty two hundred because I lost my job or something, I default. Now is it your property again? Yep, comes back to me before the seller. Okay, so then you're responsible for the bank payments and finding a new person to do this wrap on. No, well, if you fail, then yeah, I'm I'm putting right. this in here to protect me and the seller. So the original seller doesn't have to deal with this. It, right. it, it comes back to me, but yet remember you came in and you paid me uh, a, a 10 K deposit down mm -hmm. payment. Actually a deposit is deposit, but down payment. Mm -hmm. You came in, you paid me 10 K down payment for this house. You took ownership. Gail, Gail owns the house. Okay. And, and if, there there's people like Gail that would be willing to pay 350 even though it's only worth 300. Yeah. Gail, you got kids, right? You got a family, right? Well, uh, what what he's looking for is somebody who can't get a house a conventional under bank loan or something. Funding, yes. So, they're going to pay premium to anybody. Uh, the question is, how far can you jack up the premium before they say no? <laughs> you know? <laughs> there, there's always people out there. So you but, see what I did here? I, I took the, the mm -hmm. whole house that was not absolutely 100% not a deal. We all agreed that it was not a deal, right? Now look at this. I'm cash flowing on this thing, $200 a month to myself, to me, and I don't own it. I don't pay taxes. I don't pay the insurance. I don't do anything of that. What happens is if Gail fails, I get the property back. Then I turn around and sell to somebody else. You know, again, down payment. Again, the, the down payment. And then the, um, you know, and then if it happens again, then guess what? I get the property back again. This whole time, I'm, I'm not owning the property. So as long as you can find another buyer it's actually not horrible for you if somebody defaults. If you can find exactly. another buyer pretty quickly. Because guess what? You paid me 10K, right? Uh, you failed. They're going to come in and pay me 10K, right? I just made 20. Okay, so then now, what do you think is also happening to this whole property over time? The, the money's well, being I would paid assume, down. I would assume the uh, house is appreciating. That's normally what happens. Right, but... We also know that, you know, that the loan itself is for 300,000. Oh, the loan's going down. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, here's the thing though. We all know, and look at these, at all these numbers, all the same. You know how many people look at them in the backside? This house itself is going to be about almost $600,000. This is a $600,000 house. Why? Why is this a $600,000 house? Because if you do an amortization, and I will show you this here really quick. Uh, so you do you you have the three hundred thousand today is what it's is what it's worth, right? 
at 2%, okay, over 30 years, okay, what happens to all that? Today, it's, it's 300,000. Oops, I didn't want to erase. Today is 300,000, right? You pay it off tomorrow, it's still 300,000. What happens at 25 years? How much is how much have you had then paid for this whole house? Think about your credit cards. A hundred dollar purse or a hundred dollar product, you take the five months times five months to pay it off at let's say 20%. Okay. How much did that how much did that really cost you now? If you spend all that time, you go, hey, but I bought it at a hundred, but you're paying all that interest. Now you've paid 180 on that. So now you bought that at one at hundred dollars today. Over the next five months, you've had to pay that all that interest, and now it comes out to be one eighty. What do you think that house is coming out to? And I'll show you this here really quick. And I I didn't hear you say it, Chris. But but I think the original on that was a subject too, right? So the original, original, because you're saying the the mortgage payment they kept it in place. So when you bought it from the original, you're buying it subject to, and then you're putting the wrap around the subject to. Yep. Is that yes? Okay. So we're doing thirty years. We're gonna let's just say two percent. Um, we're not going to have anything there. Um, just $2,000 for closing costs, whatever. Okay. Monthly HOA fees. No, nothing. Uh, homeowner insurance. So not, we won't even include that in there. Um, property taxes is zero. Do that. There's zero. So this is what we're doing. Uh, total interest uh, interest expense. You're paying ninety five thousand dollars in 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 interest on that. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of that thirty of that thirty years at two percent, you're paying ninety five thousand dollars. So when that's said and done in thirty years, you will have paid four hundred thousand dollars for that house. So what do you think? How do you think that there will work if? If I take that and I make it 5%, because I'm going to jump it up from, from the 2 to 5, right? Uh, total interest expense right there. Still over that same time. And all I did, oh, wait, can you guys see my screen? Hello? I, I see a whiteboard, but I don't see. Oh, anything. okay, 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 okay. My bad, my bad, people. Because <laughs> uh, uh, all I did was, okay, there we go. Now it looks like Wilson. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> so just come in here to my mortgage calculator, 300,000. I put, we're going to put 10,000 down. So we're actually being, the principal is, is 290 right there. We're going to do 30 year terms, 2% right there. And we are going to come all the way down here, $2,000 in closing costs, $95,000 right here is what you're actually paying at the end of that of that 30 years on that original mortgage. So you, now you're paying $400,000 for that house. Okay, so now remember, I'm gonna turn around and, and sell this to Gail. And let's just say I don't even raise the price on there for you, but I'll, I'll, I'll raise it up to 5% uh, to interest. You're gonna be paying an additional $270,000 on that, on that uh, 30 year. But if you can still manage those those uh, those monthly payments, great. I don't care. I'm making money on that. The bank will be will make that ninety five, and I'll make anything above that ninety five additional. So let's just let me do this for a quick second. Let's look at our payment here. So all in all, like I said, in a wrap situation, the regular payment, the regular monthly mortgage payment here, based upon this calc the the calculator here is going to be $1,100 a month, okay? That's what, the, that's what you're paying off to the bank. Guess what? If I raise this up to, let's just say 4%, if 
I raise this up to 4%, we went from 111 to 1400. So I can make $300 a month right there. And I don't even own the property. All right, so it's eight o'clock, which is yep. normally when we end. And I'm sure you can talk for another hour or two on this stuff. I don't wanna though either. I know. <laughs> But I did just want to let anybody ask any last minute questions uh, before we sign off. Um, Chris, I do want to say thank you. This was a last minute ask, and I think you did a great job. There's so much information here. I probably still have some questions myself, but I think I need to just rewatch it and absorb some more of the information first. Right. Um, but does anybody else have any last questions for Chris here? I appreciate it too a lot yeah. and it's not that I don't want to ask a question because Marie and I will get our questions together and then we'll get you back yes but I don't want to open a can of worms so I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it okay I absolutely I, I'm, I'm more than happy to and you know so you, you guys kind of understand that like even on on those scenarios it's like you can keep throwing out all these different things and it still changes the structure of the of the deal they want to sell, but there's no pain. So it's going to be structured differently because they they want more money. If they're in pain, they're they're willing to take less, you know. But it, again, it all depends on how you structure the deal, you know. So again, we can make that you know, the 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 novation one, you know, so much up front. We can pay them six hundred. We can pay them the five forty. We can make their monthly payments. I tell you what, I'll pay you the six hundred thousand, and you make you continue to make those mortgage payments. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the other thing that's what I think for all of us as investors, the important thing right now is, is these could be valuable pieces of information for landlords that are sick of what's happened the last year and a half and are like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But they, you know, we can still creatively come up with opportunities for them. So I think that those are things to watch out for. I mean, or to be aware of and to who. Yeah. And then Chris, just out of curiosity, how are you structuring kind of your JV? So let's just say Liz and I have been talking to a seller. They're really set on their price. We haven't been, been able to figure out a way to kind of like get them what they want. And we're like, Chris, you know what, why don't you give them a call? See if you can work something out. Um, are you splitting the assignment fee? Um, what kind of percentage are you looking to do to team up with another member? Just so everyone kind of has right. an idea of what, what you're looking for in that kind of partnership if people have leads. So essentially how, how, I, how I structure these, these out really quick, very simple. One, you know, is you guys bring me the lead. Okay. If at minimum, if I, uh, if I can structure a deal and I can close it and it goes into closing, that's when everyone's going to get paid. If, you guys just bring me the deal and I can structure it. You guys don't want nothing else to do with it. That's fine. Then you guys will, you know, will obviously get a fee. Okay. You guys will get, you know, a thousand bucks, 1500, whatever it is, you're going to get something better than nothing. You know, if there's, if they're a motivated seller, that's fine. I can work with them. If you can't figure it out, that's fine. You can team up with me. You would at least get that bare minimum of, of an assignment of, of a, uh, you know, a submission fee basically you know for the dead lead okay the other way to make more money on it is if you can find me a buyer for it then you would then become we would then be a jv partner so i turn around and i got this property we, the disposition of it is going to be a wrap so liz turns around and says hey i got somebody that would actually that can actually pay that they're looking for a property over there da da da, da. guess what you know, they don't want to go through, uh, through the, um, <laughs> they don't want to go through the, uh, Hey there, little man. <laughs> and so then people just don't also too, don't want to go through the bank and stuff. So essentially if Liz brings me a buyer, guess what? Well, then now we're a 50, 50 on that. Our partnership is 50, 50. If I have to bring somebody else in on my side to help out with that, you know, with that deal, they're getting half of, you know, they're getting my, out of my percentage. So Liz and I are still 50, 50. So if, if uh, you know, 
if I go to Liz or Liz brings me the deal and we go, okay, 50, 50 here, she's bringing me a buyer, but it's actually Marie bringing Liz the buyer. And then they're going to split that fee. They're splitting that 50% of that fee with, with, uh, between the two of them. Same thing with me on my side, I'm going to, whoever I bring in or I need to bring in is, is going to split my portion with me. Okay. Whatever it is, I structure up with them. Um, and so with that, it makes it really easy for that. And, you know, like I said, that's your opportunity to be able to make more money, bring in, uh, bring in a buyer and stuff. Guess what? If it's, if it's deemed a property I want to keep, guess what? Okay, great. You know, the assignment fee, let's just say is $10,000. Great. I'll pay you that $5,000 to pay you out of that. You know, if you, if you go, Hey, you know what? Well, shit, I'd love to keep that. If you can structure like that, I'd love to keep that. Okay, great. Well, you know, uh, again, $10,000 assignment fee. Guess what? 50, 50 on that. You're paying me out $5,000. So very right, simple, thanks. very easy, not, yeah. not difficult at all. So no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, just one more thing before we leave too. I just want to say we are going, <laughs> no, just real quick. We're yeah, going yeah. Monday I nights. I said that I think earlier. So we start August, what? 16th will be our first Monday night. Mia, don't worry. You'll just leave a little early to go dancing. I know you will figure it out. Um, but I did want to say that I'm looking for a location, a new location, because we still can't go back to Tapestry. Um, I don't, personally, I don't love the idea of the in-person meetings being in our back of a restaurant, just because I feel like there's like less of that focused attention and like, classroom learning environment. Um, but if we have to do that for, you know, a couple times a month, I'll still be open to that. But if anyone knows of any other locations, offices, I mean, we have workplicity, but that's really far south. And I don't think that that's going to be convenient for everyone. Um, so if you guys know of anything, please let me know. I appreciate any help in finding a space. Um, and like I said, I will be open to um, options in a restaurant. But definitely somewhere that has at least like a closed door or private room um, where we could definitely cancel out the noise if we do end up in a restaurant. I know some people like it just because then they can order food and drinks and have it all in one. But anyway, that's my little spiel. So please reach out. Let me know if you have any suggestions, locations. And Liz has already given the peace symbols. So peace and love y'all. And Chris, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for doing this last thank minute. You, thank that you. was I took like two pages of notes. So I know I'm going to be calling you back for answers to some questions, follow up. All right. All right. So thank you guys. Have a great day. And did day. I really even touch much on subject to or seller financing? I mean, you did in the, in the, in the deals, you know, you, you mentioned it. So it was perfect. Well, yeah, it's like mentioned, but I mean, you see how far yeah. away from it, they are, it is. Yeah, no, it's great. So. See but, you guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye.